So we get through the Memorial, uh, Kuchar winner, very, very good winner. Uh, it was obviously, uh, crowds were very excited to have him as a champion. Uh, very personal person, so it's good to see people like this win the tournament. And uh, we knew uh, the Saturday before the uh, Memorial, you know, Jack and I started talking about potentially doing a renovation program between the Memorial and the President's Cup of rebuilding AT&T. Uh, when you hear it on TV that we're doing something on 18, you know it's real. It's going to happen. It's not going to be something, Mr. Nicholas says, we're making a change on 18. It's going to happen. So what does that mean? I mean, this was all dialogue with Jack and I out on the golf course looking at it. So all of a sudden, in the middle of summer, you don't have anything really planned except for the week before. You've got to start getting contractors. So you start bringing in contractors start bringing in like bid sheets, trying to figure out who's going to do what. And then you always hope that you're able to get a good qualified contractor because a lot of times the good ones are really, really uh, busy and booked. So we started uh, bringing people in the planning process in 24, the 24th of June. June. We started July 28th. We were very, very fortunate to have uh, Doug Modden and Modden and Golf uh, have a, basically a gap. They were doing work at Marion and after the Open. They had to get everything cleared off the driving range, so they had a deadline to go back and redo the driving range at Marion. So they had a window of opportunity to do this work, and they did a really good job. This was one of the last TV towers that we had, so we had to rip that down uh, to do the project. Uh, you can see that this was a tough project. We're starting to clean. This is uh, the new T we're building. You know, visibility issues. And you look at that hill and where the car path's at now and these sycamores right here, and you know, you have no visibility on this whole project at this point. So Mr. Nicholas comes in and, and there were some tough decisions that needed to be made. We knew that this project was difficult for the fact that everything we do did on 18T, as far as raising that T up and moving it to where it felt like it felt good on the left, impacted 15T. We also knew that we wanted to make sure we were able to have patrons on that hillside so we could only cut that hillside down so much and we also knew we wanted to have visibility. So this became really a four-dimensional project. We're looking at all these different aspects. And I can tell you, uh, I've worked with a lot of our architects and you know, Jack, arguably the greatest golfer ever. I mean, you can't debate that. But as far as architecture, this guy is absolutely brilliant. He comes in, he looks at things, he goes around and his vision is unbelievable. You know, so we got to a point where we were sort of stuck and, you know, said, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to take the two, two sycamores down. You're going to have to move the main line. We're going to cut this hillside down. So this project escalated into something very, very big. You know, we moved about 7,000 cubic yards to build this one tee. That's a lot of soil. I mean, some people build three holes of golf moving that amount of soil where we moved about 7,000 cubic yards on this process. So you can see this is a little bit where the car path was, elevation cuts, cuts of soil, just trying to get everything in. And remember guys, this is going on in the middle of summer. Why? What you want to be doing is just keeping everything tight. You want to be working on P's and Q's, making sure nothing goes bad between the summer and the tournament, and just concentrating on P's and Q's. And we're doing you know, major construction, and also we'll get to the build out a little bit later. Uh, main line had to be moved, doesn't sound like much, six inch main line, well that had all the power, all the communication for all the satellites, it had, uh, it had Time Warner, which Time Warner goes to all the different corporate tents out there so they can see in the corporate tents the live feeds from, from uh, CBS and those type of things. So this turned out to be a good project, I mean Barry George, you guys might know Barry, he's, he's a student here, uh, and this is Brett Kennedy, he was an ATI guy, right? Yeah, I think so. And this is the 18th tee, middle of summer, cement truck uh, on the 18th tee doing this kind of stuff. We, we knew that we moved this tee over to the left, and this was a pretty steep fall off, so we wanted to pour concrete, and this curbing was almost like a footer to make sure that that car path didn't slope off or slough off. So we poured that all in concrete, and then the rest of the area was RCC, which is rolled compacted concrete. You can see these are all our guys. Anybody with a white shirt is our guys. You know, to try to keep this project going on timely fashion, the contractor had a date where he was committed to another project. So we said, listen, get it shaped in, we'll do the fine tuning, and we'll do the sodding, even though we contracted out a little bit of the sodding to other people. 
Uh, but you can see this is all again roughed in, car path is somewhat in. Hillside, you know, we're working on that to get visibility to be able to see the fairway. Uh, sodding going in right now, you know, once again, our guys, Kurt Anderson, Lane Sod, we basically worked from 18 new T going all the way forward. And you can see there's a car path going in that area there. Uh, one of the funny, you know, one of the things, you know, Lane Sod, uh, for me to run this machine, Kurt, Mr. Anderson made me wear that shirt. So that's the way I could run it. And he also said, if you want this thing done, you need to get off that machine. You're holding me up. You're too damn slow. So, but I had a good time in the little bit that I got to run it. Uh, really good contractor. Kurt Anderson's a real good guy, good to work with. And, uh, you know, we, we laid, I think on the, what was it, two and a half or two acres of sod on this whole project on all the areas of disturbed on how big this got. As this is going on, you know, we got... 18T going on, we got, you know, major build out. We had a pond that was leaking. You would think that this pond leaking was like the demise of Mirrorfield. I would get like three, four emails a day, calls about this pond. Why doesn't the sixth pond have water in it? You know, it's leaking. I'm like, guys, it, I know it's leaking. Let, let me get through some of those other stuff. We'll fix it. But it's amazing how people's priorities are going on. I mean, you know, it's Beirut out there on 18. You got contractors going everywhere, and the pond on 6 is leaking, and I, I got more criticism over that. So we came in on, uh, I think it was the 11th, and basically dug out in front of this, poured concrete in front of there, and the next day, and just go back to that, this pond's completely empty. There's not a drop of water in there. Next day, we get two inches of rain, fill that whole pond up, and you, know, you can see the overflow. So you know, in a perfect world, all the, all the concrete you pour, you let it cure. All the bed night that we use with the clay, you hope it gets a set. Well, this was an acid test. Uh, and we got lucky, everything held, no issues. But it also raised some av havoc on the golf course because we had started working towards bunkers. Uh, this is the 12th. When you see water up this high on 12, you know you got some issues. The other areas that raise havoc is we were, as we talked about earlier, we we're working from 18T from the back moving forward. These are the new forward T's that we're building. They were completely sodded over, destroyed. We had to take out all, not all the mix, but like an inch of the mix, basically reshape them and keep moving forward on this project. This is finished projects here. You can see that, you know, originally we just had one car path here. Uh, now we got two car paths going up the hill, left side. Uh, and the, eight, the sod that we laid was August 13th, knowing that the tournament was uh, first week in October. So this was pretty tight to get this done. I can tell you the PGA Tour had some real concerns about us doing this project with a big major tournament behind it, but we were able to accomplish it and get it done. Uh, while we did this, you know, obviously aging demographics for, for members, members getting older. The 18th tee, we decided, uh, talking to Mr. Nicholas, we'd make this a senior tee. So this is a view of 18 T going back towards 15. So this played, I think, 408 yards. Uh, so we're using it as a senior tee. And that was uh, one of the positives with the project, along with some of the other things that we did. So to rehash this project, you can see where the old car path was. We added two car paths, um, built this tee, rebuilt this tee, modified this, uh, rebuilt this one. 86 this T here because of visibility that was right in the corridor to be able to see visibility to these bunkers so we built two new T's to once again get different yardage so you know that gave us 340 and 413 all why everything else is going on the golf course uh, and this took our turning point to 300 yards the objective of this was to put driver back in the in the in the, in the patron's hands or the, the gal or the contestants hands and I think we've accomplished that and I think there will be in the future we'll be hopefully doing some work on these bunkers uh, these bunkers during the tournament raise a lot of havoc as far as washing out and, and a lot of indigestion you'll see that as we go uh, one of the little thing we had going is a 16 pro T uh, that T was relatively on the small side we extended that forward to once again just give one more club selection into their hand before they go to the forward tee and that was well received by the players and also the, the PGA Tour. So we were doing that in conjunction with 18. Now as this is going on, build out. Uh, big, there's a lot, of, a lot of differences and we'll go through some of those but the biggest difference between the memorial is that we have one contractor doing all the work. 
where the PGA Tour sets it up where you have one guy doing the flooring, one guy doing the tanning work, one guy doing the interior work. I mean, so you had three different contractors trying to work together and, you know, two of the three were pretty good, or they were good, but the one was just absolutely terrible. Uh, they, they were just terrible and it was like herding cats the whole time. So you can see this is the fan experience, you know, cranes going in to put up this merchandise tent. Uh, some of the aggravation, uh, I've, I've told this to you know, a lot of times, you know, some of my colleagues or people who work for me, they might be doing the first tournament. I always tell them, guys, don't get hung up outside the ropes. Just don't get hung upside the ropes. You know, concentrate inside the ropes. Game of golf's played in there. Don't get hung up on the tents. Well, I did not listen to my advice. I was trying to keep it where, you know, Lucas and Rich and Matt, they were concentrating on the golf course. Let me control all the build out and that kind of stuff. And there were some very, very heated times. Uh, when you have guys taking lulls, and smash them up against tents and little stuff like this. You know, you tell the guys, you can't stack this plywood by bleachers when it's 90 degrees in August, you're going to cause bad spots. Now, is that the end of the world? No, but to me, it's presentation. It's presentation. Person comes in and they've never been here before and they're about ready to walk into a set of bleachers and there's dead spots because a contractor couldn't execute properly the things that needed to be done. So for me, that was a, a pretty pretty frustrating time and uh, I think I lost my temper quite a few times on, on these guys. Uh, and there's a lot of other stories about these people, but it all turned out. Keeping them on car pass. You get untimely rain. Guys, you're doing build out. You got to build your bleachers. You always got a job to do. Keep all the trucks, all the lulls on the car path. Well, we had a hard enough time doing that, but when they start driving across greens to take shortcuts to fill up, you know, uh, the core, because they're too freaking lazy to carry something, that causes some little bit of indigestion also. So uh, once again, a lot of things outside the ropes. But the build out, I mean, it all turned out great. Uh, you know, the views that we had, like this tent, this tent was huge, that's not completed. Uh, that was, uh, Rich, which was, that wasn't NBC, that was... So that was city, so if you had a city card, you'd go in there. This was safe light. You know, all the tents behind number 11, bleachers, you know, bleachers on 12, you know, just all this stuff going on. Why you're trying to prepare for another tournament and do the construction on 18 and, and that kind of aspect. Uh, T signs, you know, this to me, there's two things I hope I never see again in a tournament is NBC doing the television and uh, T signs. Uh, on here, because you know, how do you how do you mow this properly when it's going through the back of the bent grass? And the guy, and the guy, the guy that is our irrigation tech, Brett Kennedy, he traced the golf course out probably three, four times. I mean, any post that goes in, any sign that goes in, he's got to authorize it. So there's irrig and it's not like we just have irrigation. You know, we have cables from all the different years. We got power. We got you know con water for concessions. I mean. It's like an archaeological dig out there. So every time they did one of these, he had to go out, he had to approve all these different signs and everything else and making sure it was good, along with the tents, with everything outside the ropes. So this guy, I mean, he spent hours and hours with the tracer in his hand and did a phenomenal job. When you have five different people calling me, I need approval for this, I need approval for that. And these guys don't come in two, three weeks ahead, which is probably good in this situation with the bent grass. They're coming the week before. And they've got a deadline, and so everyone's getting pulled in different directions to try to get this stuff done. Uh, another big difference between the Memorial and the uh, President's Cup is we had these electronic boards. We had electronic, 11 electronic scoreboards and 15 video boards. This is 12T. You can see the car pass not wide enough for this crane. So we'd get guys together with plywood. Plywood this crane all the way in to set these leaderboards and status boards all over the golf course. Personally, it was a pain in the ass, but I thought it was, it was a really, really good, exciting to be able to see about the players and contestants, where they went to college. I mean, you know a lot of these guys, you watch them on TV, but you really don't know their background. You don't know the different tournaments they won, unless you're really, really keeping up with it. But I thought it was an element of the President's Cup that was pretty excited and had a lot of uh, flair to it. Uh, some differences in philosophy between the Memorial and the President's Cup is how things were structured. Uh, for the Memorial, you know, we had seven different entrances throughout the golf course. For the President's Cup, there was only three. This is a fan experience. This was on the other side of the driving range where people were bused to this area, dropped off. They could go through the golf shop, 
Uh, they get, you know, get searched there for anything they're not supposed to have and then go on to the golf course. Uh, you know, just a different process of how things are going to be done. Now, will we do these type of things for the President's Cup? Probably not, but what it did is it opened up our eyes for some potential opportunities and also corporations. Corporations comes in on number 12 like Safe Light, sees this 10 up there like, wow, you know, this was great. We want to do this moving forward with the memorial. So it, it, it was good for the fact that we took some of their ideas and we're going to continue to use them. But there's some things that we would never be able to do just because it was cost prohibitive and just tearing this whole area up with this property wasn't even ours. So some of the differences between the Memorial and the President's Cup, uh, 50,000 square feet of tent, 154,000 square feet of tent. So it's three times the size. I mean, a lot more build up going on. Bleachers, you know, normally we do 1,800. We're going to 6,600. Now that number for the Memorial is going to go up a little bit because there's some bleacher areas that were very popular with the patrons. And once again, it's about the patron experience. If, if you can get these get people coming back and returning and buying tickets and buying that beer and, and that kind of stuff. It just brings in money for our club for us to do other things and, and try to keep the, everything moving uh, forward. Volunteers were less. A lot of that was related to not having the, the mechanical scoreboards. The electrical scoreboards didn't need as many volunteers to do that aspect of the tournament. Uh, golf carts, a lot more golf carts. I still think this number is bogus. I think there's a lot more golf carts. Concessions, 11 concessions versus 15 concessions. Uh, and this is obviously 18 with the clubhouse renovation. You know, the clock went in. I think the clock went in, well, I think two weeks before the President's Cup. That thing was back ordered. Uh, and you can see everything, all the people and, and the clubhouse renovation being done there. Now, staffing. We run hard all the time at Mirrorfield, and that's just the way the place is, and you're not going to change it. So you take doing tournament preparation, the hours that the guys work leading up to the memorial, memorial's over, then you go right to the golfing season. We have national members, local members, trying to get everything in, and with a condensed schedule, a lot of golf in a short period of time. But we also knew as our, as our expectations and level of maintenance needed to be going higher for the President's Cup, we are going to be losing people. So some of the things we did differently, uh, this is Pat Carroll, he's training some of the Michigan State International uh, program from China. Uh, you know, it's very important when you bring people over from different cultures, you gotta inundate them in our cultures. So I made sure Nexus knew how to chew. Uh, he threw up the rest of the afternoon after that, so <laughs> and that might not be a good thing moving forward, but uh, he gave it a shot and uh, had a good time. But some of the countries, you know, obviously United States, we had Canada, Unfortunately, Jordan Barber, really, really talented individual. Uh, we weren't able to get him a visa, so he got a really good job in uh, Ontario. Uh, obviously, some Hispanic Mexican guys. We had a guy from Scotland, Scott Marr, that came through the Ohio State International Exchange Program. Some Irish guys, some Adobe, and then also the Chinese guys. So, you know, staffing was a huge concern of mine going into this, knowing that you're doing two tournaments, all the construction that you don't want to do is have burnout by the time the President's Cup comes. When people get tired, they make mental mistakes. Mental mistakes show up on national TV. So you got to make sure everyone's you know, trying to keep them rested, but you still got things to do, and just try to bring in other sources of labor to help us out. Uh, this is John Scott. He's a champion. He's the, uh, used to be a championship agronomy at the tour. He's now uh, in charge of uh, all the agronomics related to Nicholas Design. Uh, some other things that we did, uh, which is very unique. I mean, Larry Dornish, head pro at uh, Mirrorfield, we got to a point where August and August, you know, ball marks are big, Plays, play was crazy because they knew they didn't have the fall, golf, so people that normally come in the fall say, I got to come in the summer to get my rounds in. You know, our play was really, really high. So you get August, you get all these ball marks that are big. We actually did a joint effort where we had, you know, this is one of the assistant pros, that's an assistant pro, all the caddies, they came out on Mondays basically took soil probes, probed out the ball marks, put them in with seed, and then they, they sort of come up like a chia pet to make sure that we didn't have all these ball marks on the greens. You know, that's something that is really good to have a golf pro in an organization that gets it, that if I look bad, we all look bad. If the pro shop looks bad, I look bad. To have that cohesive work environment where we all got to work together for the common goal, because what we don't want to do is have somebody upset why we didn't get things done. So, like I said, and these guys, they didn't get paid. I mean, they, they came and, and Larry said, listen, you're in the pro shop, 
This is your Monday off. The grounds crew is not taking Mondays. You're coming out. You're going to work. Caddies, you guys do real well here financially with everything you make. You're going to give one day back to the grounds crew because obviously if the golf course is good, you're going to get rounds. You're going to get tips the whole nine yards. So that's, that's a pretty good teamwork approach that we had uh, in August that we did that. You know, some of the, some of the dilemmas, uh, you know, build out, as I talked about, was, was so much bigger. And some of the things that were different that we don't do for the memorial, you know, those big, big beer trailers where, you know, oh, jeez, you dispense the beer out. Well, those things weigh 12,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds. Well, you know, they ask you, can you get across the bridge? Well, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I'm a golf course superintendent. Well, the answer on this one was no. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> it destroyed this, the, I think it was a Thursday before the President's Cup. I mean, so all the decking's done. So we had one contractor come in, start tearing this apart to redeck it. And then, you know, it had this type of situation where Kyle, Kyle used to be assistant at uh, Crooked Stick. He just got the Victoria National job. He was my spray tech. Uh, about three or four years ago. He came over from Crooked Stick, him and this other gentleman came over for Crooked Stick, came on a Saturday. Now, you know, guys, you know, golf course guys wanted to golf course guy stuff. They don't want to come and redeck bridges. But he drove over specifically to help us redeck this bridge because on Monday it had to be open and I didn't have anybody to do it. I mean, we were, you know, I don't want to say what I just want to say, but we were going pretty hard, and we didn't have other al uh, resources to do that. So Kyle came over. Oh, this is Russ Myers. He's superintendent at L.A. Country Club. He was over. He, he didn't help with anything. He's, he was sort of, you know, the guy just uh, watching and uh, making sure things are going well. But, you know, have that type of camaraderie with, with other, other organizations helping you out for these type of events is, is a pretty unique thing that I think is really unique to our industry. You know, my wife's a CPA, love her to death. But, you know, CPA people, when it's tax season, you don't see CPA people coming over and volunteer to help out with tax returns. You know, that's something that's really, I think, unique with our occupation that we have. So you look at this schedule and you say, geez, oh, man, th this can't be this hard, you know. I thought going into this, our biggest issue would be leaves, you know, trying to keep up with that. But you look at Thursdays, first tee times, 11.30. Friday, 110. Saturday, we knew from the get-go it was going to be tough because there's two matches, uh, two five-hole matches starting at 730, then 121, and then Sunday, 1204. So you look at that schedule like, you know, th this should be a relatively easy tournament to prepare if everything goes well with weather. Um, the whole time going in, we wanted to have all the maintenance being done two to three hours prior to the first tee time. And that was for the fact that we wanted green speeds to be consistent. So think about if you're starting, you know, at 7 o'clock and you're done by 9 o'clock and you got a 1 o'clock match, by the time they get there, your greens have probably slowed up a little bit. So the whole thought process going in that we would be doing maintenance two to three hours ahead of that and adjusting it as need be with knowing that Saturday, 7.30, is going to be a tough day with, with two days of matches. You know, after morning uh, maintenance is done, we always had crews of two to three people out ahead of the matches, making sure that the leaves were in situations and, and just any last minute detail needed to be, just did rotational maintenance in front of those groups. And then obviously supervisors were constantly out there doing things. This was a tournament turned out to be, which I thought was gonna be easiest, by far the toughest thing I've ever been associated with. Uh, you can see guys, you know, doing mowing, Joe and CISO, sales rep, uh, he's just, I don't know, he's about ready to buy donuts or something, I don't know what he's about to do. <laughs> Uh, another big difference between uh, the Memorial and, and the President's Cup was the philosophy on rough, uh, being that we weren't worried about numbers. We were not sure, you know, we weren't worried somebody shooting 20 under because it's match play, doesn't matter. So big thing is you normally for the Memorial, we take our rough from three and a half inches, that we top it off at three and a half, we were doing two and a half inches and we were mowing rough on Tuesday and Wednesday leading up to the tournament. So every time you do that, you know, all the clippings, you got to get the clippings out of the bunkers. Uh, and you can just see all the different guys working and just making sure everything's going well on that aspect. Some other things, you know, Osage oranges. You know, obviously you start thinking about people out there and an Osage orange fall, falling on Mrs. Jones's head and, and uh, causing an issue. So I did not come up with this idea. It was Lucas, you know, throwing throw ropes into these trees and shaking them and you can see all the oranges coming out, falling all over the place. 
and this is what we're generating on that. So we're trying to do that in the afternoons and the mornings and just try to make sure that we didn't have any issues with that. Uh, media was, was really, really crazy. Um, I've always taken the approach that uh, I try to do as little media as possible. I've always felt that my place, and when I was at Oak Hill, I did a lot more there, but my place in Mirrorfield is, I'm, this is about Mr. Nicholas and his vision to bring golf and a competitive golf to Central Ohio. So all the media should go through him and, and that type of aspect and just do the bare minimum on the media. But this was a situation where it was a lot bigger and a lot more media. I had to do the golf channel and then Nicholas was getting, or not Nicholas, but uh, Lucas was getting interviewed by Columbus Dispatch. So, you know, all those different things that they take time. I mean, you know, you, you got to go do an interview and you got guys on the golf course doing maintenance and you're like, where I really need to be is with the guys. I don't need to be talking to this reporter about something stupid. But you had to do those type of things because it was a pretty big event. 